You see on the screen I have two links listed for projectile simulations, both at fat.colorado.edu. Please take a moment and check both of these out. One's called Projectile Motion, the other is called Motion in Two Dimensions. The first simulation I'm showing you is Motion in Two Dimensions. I'm showing you a case you can see I've clicked down here known as Linear Acceleration 1. You see two vectors on the screen. The green vector is the velocity vector, and the blue vector is the acceleration vector. Pay special attention to how those two vectors are related. You see the ball speeding up and slowing down and then changing directions. When the acceleration vector and the velocity vector are in the same direction, the ball speeds up. When the acceleration vector and the velocity vector are in different directions, notice that the ball's velocity decreases. Let's look at another example of linear acceleration. This is linear acceleration 2. And again, pay attention to the relationship between velocity and acceleration as this ball speeds up, slows down, and changes direction. Let's take a look at another type of motion on a simple harmonic motion. You might recognize this motion from, say, a pendulum. This motion is kind of hypnotic if you watch it go back and forth like this. Pay close attention to the relationship between the velocity and the acceleration. Okay, another type of motion I want to take a look at is known as circular motion. This is a very important concept, especially moving forward as we study physics. What's really interesting to note here is that the ball is moving in a circular path. The acceleration vector is always directed towards the center of the circle. That's called a centripetal acceleration. It's a very important type of acceleration, necessary to keep an object moving in a circular path. And also notice that the velocity vector's length is not changing. But this object is accelerating because the direction of the velocity vector is constantly changing. Keep in mind that acceleration can involve either changing speeds or changing directions. The speed is constant. In other words, the magnitude of that vector is constant. But the direction is constantly changing for this object moving in circular motion. You can also have some fun at this site by grabbing hold of the ball and dragging it around and seeing how the velocity and the acceleration are related. But anyway, I just want to briefly show you this simulation. The other simulation I want to show you was the projectile motion fed simulation. You can actually adjust quite a few launch parameters. You can change the launch angle, the initial speed, the mass of the object, the diameter of the object. You can also launch a lot of different things. Humans, pianos, Buicks, tank shells, golf balls, baseballs, bowling balls, footballs, you name it. If you're interested in seeing how air resistance affects the trajectory of objects, you can turn air resistance on too. The effects of air resistance are small, but they are real, so that's kind of neat to look at if you get a chance. I'm going to launch an adult human at an initial angle of 35 degrees and an initial speed of 25 meters per second to show you what that would look like. And all the information you're provided is kind of neat. The hang time, the time the person was in the air, was 3 seconds. Notice that the height is negative 1.2. What that means is the person's height is 1.2 meters lower than it was when they left the cannon. That, of course, is a vertical height. The range is the horizontal distance that the person went. The horizontal distance from the cannon to where they're currently sitting is 61.6 meters. Let's see what happens if I shoot the person at a 55 degree angle, keeping the initial speed constant. Now that's kind of neat. The time in the air for the 55 degree launch was higher, 4.2 seconds in this case. The person came back down to the same height, which is 1.2 meters below the height that they were shot from, vertically speaking. The range here is almost the exact same, 60.8 meters. That begs the question, what is the ideal launch angle for a projectile? Go ahead and think about that. Maybe you know the answer. Maybe you want to test it. If so, visit this vet simulation and give it a try. But just for fun, I'm going to go ahead and launch a Buick into the vicinity of our fellas laying down over there. Ouch, I hope they're okay. But neglecting air resistance, if I launch a Buick and a person with the same conditions, meaning same launch angle, same initial speed, they will end up at the exact same location which is bad news for the person, obviously. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please take some time to go visit the FET simulations that I just overviewed. And in the next video, I will start to show you how we use our knowledge of projectile motion to solve problems. Visit those sites and have some fun.